snacks, I highly recommend it. Our Indian panel of Pocahontas goes great with a bag of Cheetos if you're looking for something adventurous. Okay. Oh my god, I love that. This 
guy from Wisconsin. Here. Any other cyclists out there? 
Moo! That's weird. No, well, that's a moo. Oh, that's a moo! Sorry, I was humble. That's okay. You humble me, sir. You're a gracious cow. <laughs> the nicest cow in the house. <laughs> Yeah, no, I rode my bike here. I actually get to ride my bike to a lot of the gigs here in the city. It's really fun. Richmond's a very bikeable city. But I always notice you always get the same look whether you're biking to a bar or whether you're biking away from a bar. People just look at you and they're like, wow, that guy, that guy definitely has a DUI. <laughs> like, that's not cardio, that's court order. Someone had to tell that guy to do that. Oh, man, a lot of tension. So much tension now. Like, I don't know if you guys heard, you guys heard about these rap beefs, how rap artists are beefing right now? It's a lot of rap beef. Are we all familiar with rap? I don't listen to rap. I listen to country. Anybody else? I know you can tell, like, look at me. That makes sense. Anybody else listen to country? Do you like country music here? Oh boy, it's like that Kamala joke again. Ah! <laughs> That's okay. I think country music is absolutely amazing, because if you ask white people, we're like, we stole that from black people, but then everybody heard Jason Aldean, and then black people were like, you can't have it. I right, one person to start Jason Aldean, thank you. <laughs> I don't know. I just wish like country artists would have the same, I just wish country artists would be the same way that hip hop artists would do. I think that'd be really fun. Like, I don't know if you're familiar with hip hop artists, they go at each other in their songs. I think that'd be really fun if country artists did that the same way, like they had beef. Like if like Willie Nelson and Johnny Cash had beef with one another and they were on the same track, like Johnny Cash would be like, I am a straight up gangster, fuck around and find out. If you keep talking all that bullshit, I'll stick my dick inside your mouth. <laughs> and then Willie Nelson will come back at him and be like, your mom is a Midwest fucker, she makes a living licking balls. She's fucked everyone in this town and sleeps in bathroom stalls. <laughs> okay, I can carry over. I should just sing for five minutes. I just sing for another five, however long I have up here. I'll just keep singing. I like to sing songs. Gracious. How do we, oh, I'll do my condom joke. I'll do a joke about condoms. How do we feel about condoms? Everybody, do you like condoms, audience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the side said yes, the side STDs. Oh no. I've divided the house. It's Kamala J. Dean all over again. I gotta drop that. <laughs> I don't know. I really do like condoms. I'm with this side of the room, ladies and gentlemen. I adore condoms. I think condoms are fantastic. Y'all wanna know why I like condoms? I like to confirm the kill. <laughs> I like to look it in the eye and say, No time, son, you're not fucking this life up. The tag in a bag and throw it away. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get on this. I'm going to get out on this one. Oh boy, what do I want to leave on? I'll leave on this. Anybody here familiar with NASCAR? Yeah. Sure. Anybody here been to a NASCAR race? We've got a NASCAR track over here in Richmond. It's a really fun time. For those of you, anybody not like NASCAR? Let me ask that. Anybody here not like NASCAR, like you hate NASCAR? That is A-OK, -okay because I understand why people don't like NASCAR, because they say it's too long. It goes too long. I think a really good way to fix NASCAR, we make it one lap. <laughs> and they're off! And they're done. All right, thank you all for putting on the video. Okay, okay, okay. 
like you. So we, we have a few married people up here, right? So my wife and I, we are an intercontinental couple. Right? Oh yeah, just a fancy name for interracial couple. <laughs> Uh, she's an American, I'm from India, as you guys must have noticed. So, one of my friends, he's an Indian guy, right? So he comes up to me and he tells me that, dude, what's the difference between having an Indian wife versus an American wife? So, you see my expression, I was like, <laughs> I don't know what this guy's talking about. I said, look, there's no difference between wives, all right? Wherever you go, and don't worry, this is not anything like, you know, I'm not trying to derogate the wife, but I said, then look, there's no difference between an Indian wife and an American wife. That is it. So he did not get it. He said, explain me some more. So I said, okay, he's a computer guy, I'm a computer guy, right? So I told him, let's think of wives as laptops. <laughs> <laughs> think of them as laptops. They come in different configurations, right? <laughs> <laughs> different sizes, different, you know, colors and all that stuff. But but they all run on the same operating system. They have the same commands for you guys. <laughs> it's just that your command comes in, in Hindi and mine comes in English. <laughs> we follow the same command. And above all, above all, just like laptops, all of them come with a very good memory. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, I know you got good memories, right? You remember more than us. You know it. <laughs> you got a baby, no? Ask your husband what's his birthday, he won't remember after the three years. But you will remember. <laughs> Alright, another thing about being an intercontinental couple is like, my wife doesn't know my language. But I know her, right? She speaks English, I speak Hindi, so she doesn't know. Now, here's a very good thing that I can use that to my advantage when we are having a fight, when we are having a row, right? Every married person knows that when you guys are having that kind of a row, something goes inside you and then there are certain words that want to come out from your mouth. But at certain point, you don't say that. But for me, they come out, they come out mm -hmm. onto my throat. And my brain sends a single signal to my tongue. Hey, change the language, change the language, <laughs> change the language. And then the words come out in my language. And my wife is suddenly in the middle of that. She stops and says, what? What did you say? I said, oh, I said I love you in my language. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, my wife and I, well actually she is a very smart woman, I would like to say that. Um, so in the South, they say that you, I married up, right? So I think you guys look like uh, you know, young people, so I'll give an example. We are the living example of Bernadette and Howard from Big Bang Theory. <laughs> And she is so smart, she makes all the plans and she does everything. And I am living the dream life of a lazy husband. Which I know every husband wants to live, but yeah. Uh, but that's all I had for today. Thank you so much. For
I was expecting you to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, Lynn says. Cool. You always like Bill Clinton? Yeah. <laughs>
Um, yeah, growing up, you know, my favorite song was um, Backstabbers by the OJs. Yeah, that's a little dated for you young folks in the crowd. Um, yeah, and pe people would always tell me, like, I'm an old soul, right? Which just means I was, like, traumatized as a child. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I still retain aspects of my youth, you know? I knew it was time to go to bed when Cartoon Network turns into adult school, or when, you know, Nickelodeon turns into Nick at night, versus, like, you older folks in the crowd with the Star Spangled Banner. Don't know anything about that. Um, <laughs> Different time, different time. Um, and you know, I I've never used I've never used like a payphone before, right? I, I don't really understand what that's like. And you know, I promise this was not I, I this was my joke before you said it. Um, but you know, Obama was my first black president and not Bill Clinton. Um, <laughs> so, um, again, you ruined that moment for me, so okay. Um,
fuck. Uh, sometimes, you know, on occasion. Uh, let's come back to it. Uh, <laughs> I, um, I like to fuck upwards ethically, um, cause I'm a bad person, but I'm fucking a union organizer right now, uh, which is great, you know, cause I'm, I'm a little left-leaning, and my politics are as well. So, um, you know, it, it works out. Um, we can come together on that. Um, so, um, <laughs> I also, um, I also fuck down, six feet deep. Nope, I'm not an necrophile, I am fucking a mortician. Um, she's surprisingly lively. Um, and, um, <laughs> one time she went to go grab a condom from this big cabinet, and she pulled out, like, a bag of bones, and she said, this used to be a bear's hand. And, I mean, I thought we were using protection, but I'm fine with bear bones, you know. Um, Since coming out, I've, uh, I've realized that ladies, you know what I'm talking about, jokes are no longer abstract, and they are, I mean, I don't know what they're talking about. They're not exactly catered to me, uh, if you can imagine. And um, I, so I wrote some for me, and you know, hopefully other trans women. And um, so it, there's very slight differences. We'll see if you guys can pick up on them. And I will say, I, I do have to tell them in the voice that I picture myself coming across as when I try to relate to this one about femininity. Ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies, don't you fuck it. Don't you hate it when they comment on your Adam's apple. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Ladies. Don't you hate it when you're on a first date. You know, you got all guts to go. And, yeah. You know, you're trying to do regular first date stuff and you ask them, you know, I don't feel like enough of a woman. Ladies, don't you hate that. Don't you hate that compulsion. <laughs> okay, um, well, I'll, I'll leave you on this one. Um, I think genitals have gotten too complicated. They've got too much of an explicit association uh, with, you know, sex, penis, uh, boy, vagina, girl, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> fat chance. Um, but I think, I think we can simplify. I think we can make it a little bit clearer. So I think, like, linguistically, I think belly buttons really knocked it out of the park, because you should either be an any or an outie. You can be, you know, I'm a girl with an outie, but obviously that presents complications because, you know, everybody's got an any of some sort, and that, you know, that implies that that's a pussy that shits, and that's kind of disingenuous. Um, and, um, you know, an outie's a car. So, anyway. <laughs> I've been asked to, thanks guys. Thanks for Why 
did they have to tell me that? You know, and then I realized it's because Google Maps is homophobic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm in the car, I'm listening to Chapel Roan, and I'm on the way to Joanne's Fabrics. <laughs> Not Michael's, Joanne's. <laughs> I don't even think straight people are allowed in Joanne's. <laughs> So like clearly I'm gay, and you're gonna tell me to keep straight past Hooters? I couldn't even keep straight past season three of Glee. <laughs> um, I feel like I, I do need to mention I am technically bisexual. Yeah. I just I I just really hate dealing with men. You know, um, recently I've been trying this new thing where um, when a man wants to talk to me and I want him to leave me alone, I just scream. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like it when you scream. <laughs> You know, like, in my mind, every dude who is obsessed with going to the gym is just trying to escape his feelings. But, like, in my mind, the way I imagine it is, like, in their mind the whole time they're lifting weights, they're just like, I don't know how to talk to women. I wish I had a better relationship with my dad. Uh, I think I might be gay. I don't know, they're all also gay in my mind, <laughs> personally, I don't know. Um, I just think everybody needs to be normal. <laughs> right? Everybody lately has been so fucking weird. The other day, a man I did not know told me he wanted to suck my pussy lips. I was like, if you're gonna be that graphic, can you at least describe something that actually feels good? <laughs> I'm gonna start going up to men and telling them I wanna gnaw on their dick tip. <laughs> Guys, side note, it took me so long to come up with that punchline. <laughs> because it was so hard to think of something gross you could say to a man that they wouldn't find a way to be turned on by. <laughs> um, but yeah, like they need to be normal. I, I just don't know why, like I know I talk about genitals on stage, but I don't know why people think they can just like come up to me and start talking about genitals. Like the other day, one of my coworkers found out I was gay and her immediate reaction was, you like bumping coochies? <laughs> I was like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but can you like, be normal right now? <laughs> I swear, it's even the kids. Guys, even the kids need to be normal. The other day, um, I was having dinner with my friend, and a little boy came up to us, and um, he asked if we were on a date, and she said yes, and he said, oh, maybe I can slide in there later. <laughs> Be normal! You're a little boy! Slide into a water slide. Like a normal boy. I don't know, uh, I'm very normal. I think Grace Moyer. <laughs> Either been 
cell music. <laughs> I hear all the black women coming for the white people. You know what I mean? You know? uh, I see you white lady. No, I didn't go to court today. <laughs> I actually went yesterday. <laughs> no, I'm more than dressed like this because I'm looking for a night job. So, because I got to get out the dope game right now. I got to stop selling drugs. A lot of people realize they got to stop selling drugs after they get locked up or after their mom and house get shot up. Good thing I didn't have to go that far. I noticed I had to get off the dope game when I got shot at by some gay people. I gotta tell y'all this. I'm telling you, I was on the block. I seen the gay people hop out. Like the Powerpuff Girls. Smacking each other on the ass. Like, you get them, you get them, no, you get them. On three, we go shoot. One, two, three. <sighs> One of the worst days ever for me. Anybody all uh, work at McDonald's? That's good. I fucking hate McDonald's workers. They're the only workers that get mad at you because you're hungry. What kind of stuff that mean? They see you in the drive-thru like, God damn, he back again? This whole friend, he got like, he can cook at home. <sighs> Welcome to McDonald's, man, I take your order. It seems like McDonald's hired anybody but the right people. <laughs> they be at the interviews like, no GED? Hired. You can't speak no English? Higher. You're a drug dealer. Ah, got some weed on you? Higher. <laughs> you want the hobble and graduate? We'll give you a call back later. <laughs> Anybody married? Good. <laughs> I fucking hate being married. <laughs> I fucking hate it. The only reason I ain't been married because now I got a set of partners to have sex. <laughs> Me and my wife been in the military like, okay, boo, next week to 1040 to 1046 we're gonna have sex, okay? <laughs> Fuck y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all out here like, wow. He go only last six minutes. Study shows, ladies. Sex only lasts three minutes on average. Do your research. <laughs> I know, ladies, y'all still in y'all head like, no, I need a man that can go hours. I'm gonna put y'all on game, ladies. Any man that go hours means two things. He's either on drugs or he pussy this garbage. I'm sorry. He's not gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> yeah, I've been married for five years now. Married for five years. I feel like my wife still don't trust me though. Cause she always going to sleep, smuggling her pussy with the sheets and covers. Like, she be having the pussy in the string wrap. I be having to go to sleep with a box cover now. I, have you ever had, you know how hard it is to try to sneak a fuck? You ever try to sneak a fuck? Man, I be, I be trying to get the pussy like, like it's a drug deal. I'd be like, shh. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's good pussy right there. <laughs> Woo! Good pussy, good pussy. Before I get out of here, before I get out of here, <laughs> I would like talking to my fellows. Fellows, I don't care how tough you are, how big you are. Oh man, that ain't pussy with the ass up in the air. <laughs> ass up in the air? I'm telling you, you, you feel more violated when the pain turns. You're like, oh, oh, oh. I'm Chuck Nathan. Appreciate y'all. <laughs>
<laughs> and I was like, an offensive fever dream. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, this next comic is running so many good rooms around town. It is amazing. Um, I am so excited to bring up this comedy colleague of mine, uh, Linda D. very opposite thoughts really quick. I'm going to start it. First of all, uh, shout out to Marie. I love your idea. Sell raffle tickets to the cookout. That is how we're going to fund Kamala's campaign. That, I mean, you call the DNC immediately and get that started. We are about to be straight to the White House on that one. Straight to the White House. Second, someone told me that J.D. Vance looks like a racist care bear. <laughs> Just like oppression stare. <laughs> Alright, those are my two sorry. I just had to get that out of my head. Alright, how are you guys doing? Woo! Oh, good to see you. Good to see you. We're gonna have some fun. But uh, before I get started, I need to get serious just for a second. Um, I need to ask that we all take a moment, bow our heads, have a moment of silence for Drake's career. <laughs> because that is over. My man got cooked this summer. Dear God. Um, yeah, that was a rap battle. That was hip hop Armageddon. <laughs> the only person that took a bigger L than Drake this summer was that Australian breakdancing lady in the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> I think a kangol hat was part of breakdancing culture, but I was unfamiliar with the kangaroo kit as a move, right? <laughs> Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> I didn't know what that was. <laughs> so, uh, I'm an aunt. I have, yeah, shout out to the aunts. Uh, I've got two nieces and a nephew, and someone once told me that being an aunt is all the good things of being a mom and none of the bad. Like, I don't care if they brush their teeth, take their vitamins, or grow up to be convicted felons who run for president. That's not my job. <laughs> I know my role. Fill their bellies with candy, teach them curse words in Spanish, and then take those little Tasmanian devils home. <laughs> because hanging out with my nieces and nephew is a lot like going to my high school reunion. It sounds like the best idea in the world when I get the invitation, but 30 minutes into it, I'm like, I don't like these people. <laughs> <laughs> they smell. And they're looking at me funny. Yeah. The other thing I don't like about them is that they think I'm old. Like, not adult to child old, they think I'm black and white television old. <laughs> they think I walked 10 miles to school in the snow old. They think I had a first class ticket on the Titanic. <laughs> like it was just me and Rose hanging out on a plank of wood in the ocean, right? Chilling. One night I was reading this fairy tale story to my nephew, right? And it was illustrated with the beautiful princess, the long flowing gown, the whole spiel. And my nephew looks at me dead serious and he says, Aunt Linda, is this what they wore in the 90s? Um, I said, what 90s? The 1490s? <laughs> <laughs> this kid thinks I'm so old that I went to school with Cinderella. <laughs> no more candy for him. <laughs> so I got a new job this summer. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, Interestingly, the first time in 10 years that I have to go into an office. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Okay. So, so I thought, hey, I've, I've had all the jobs before, right? It's like riding a bike. And it's exactly like riding a bike, except I'm going uphill in a snowstorm trying to juggle pickles. And it's not working out. Packing a lunch and putting on pants before 7 a.m. is not happening for me. And truthfully, one of those things is gonna have to go. Your girl likes to eat, so it looks like it's gonna be the pants. Um, but it's cool, it's cool. HR has a pol policy, it's called bring your true self to work. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, they did not know that I am a snack-loving, pantless goblin. <laughs> and look, look, all right, we're gonna work it out, right? Because 
I save lives, full bellies filter spreadsheets. Y'all want this work done or not? Just let me know. Just let me know, okay? All right, so you guys know I'm an aunt. I'm probably losing my new job because I don't like to wear pants. I'll tell you one more thing about me. Um, so I, um, I love Netflix documentaries. Um, have you guys seen this, something called Escaping Twin Flames? Yes! Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's good, let's talk about it. Real quick, if you don't know, it's about a guy who starts a for-profit university um, to teach people how to find true love. Their soulmate, their twin flame. So it's the University of Phoenix for lonely people. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, this guy is all about getting money out of his students. He's like, money, 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 bring it, bring it, bring it, right? He's kind of a crook. To the point that at one point in the um, documentary, the narrator says, would $10 million be too much for you to have your ultimate lover? What do you think, 10 million? Hell no, nobody's paying $10 million for love, not this economy. <laughs> but I started thinking about it, and I was like, for $10 million, that dick is bomb. That is some grade A prime penis. That dick comes with pedigree papers and a lifetime warranty, and I damn sure don't have $10 million, but I got a couple thousand saved. So I'm thinking, maybe they'll let me hold it for the weekend. <laughs> Model the balls, come around the beach a little bit. Uh -huh. I wonder what that $10 million dollar get to. Because yeah. I'm curious, and we all know what curiosity does. Kills, <laughs> kills so many white people in horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, you don't have to follow every squeaky sound in the basement. It is okay to run away from the spooky barn. And remember, turn around, don't get massacred. Okay, I'm going to do it. Picture had all these little shrimp shaped bruises all over my face. 
got to so bad at that point because they banned me that I was hanging out in the Waffle House parking lot waiting for the midnight shift so that the sketchy cook Doug would clock in because he'd throw anything in my face for five bucks. <laughs> I grew up in the southwest part of Virginia. Uh, I was one of six kids, three girls, three boys. Think the Brady Bunch, but with more dads. <laughs> um, we were very poor growing up. Um, I have friends that have complained about having to share their bedrooms with siblings, and I think to myself, wow, you had a bedroom. <laughs> my mom would go to school supply shopping for us, and she'd go to the cheapest place she could find. So I'd end up being the only kid in class waiting to sharpen my number B pencils. <laughs> now, my mom never came right out and said we were poor, but I was a smart kid. I was able to put B and B together and figure it out. <laughs> and there were a lot of little things. <laughs> Like the fact that we had multiple pictures of my brother eating sauerkraut straight from his tin can on different occasions in our photo album. Like he was in this uh, Popeye the Trailer Man era, I guess. And then on top of that, my favorite food was cheese. That was my favorite cheese brand. More specifically, government cheese. So a little backstory. In the early 80s, the government found themselves with a number of large, a number of, of uh, dairy surplus in the millions of pounds, and that included 115 pounds of processed cheese that they had no idea what to do with. So they got the idea to give it away to those families in need so they could take care of them as a way to kind of repair Reagan's image. Now, I don't know about you, but the thought of the government taking care of me in this kind of situation is about as comforting as Gypsy Rose's mother taking care of me. <laughs> so my family, we would uh, load up, we'd go down to the Tazewell County Fairgrounds to pick up our dairy products, including the cheese. And I won't say that I grew up in a hick town, but the men in my town did not like shirts, <laughs> but they loved overalls. So you could be out in town, and at any minute you'd be playing peekaboo with a puppy chafed nipple from behind some faded underwear. <laughs> And if you got really lucky, you'd have that double nipple sighting. You got the double nipple sighting, it was like a four-leaf clover, and as majestic as the two suns on Tatooine. <laughs> and a double nipple sighting means you get to close your eyes, take a sip of RC Cola, and make a wish. <laughs> I wish I hadn't seen Roscoe's nipples. <laughs> so we'd head down to the Tazewell County Fairgrounds, get the cheese, and on big black letters it just said the word cheese. And then underneath it, it said no froze, which is the most depressing slogan for any brand I've ever heard. <laughs> and one last thing, they would also give us powdered milk. And if you've never had powdered milk, it's a very odd substance. It's both wet and dry at the same time. <laughs> Imagine being in a multi-generational bachelorette party. Okay. <laughs>
you know, things are things are things are really rough out there. But um, I, it's time to to get sober, be brave. You know, uh, you gotta quit self isolating, quit shamefully taking shots at home alone, and go out into the world and get shot at in a crowd like a real American. <laughs> yeah, I uh, um, I wish I could blame having a drinking problem on my genetics, but um, I'm the first in my family. <laughs> <laughs>
of the shit happening around me. Um, that said, I thought that maybe, I thought that maybe uh, when I lost my glasses that, you know, I would look a little tougher, a little bit less approachable, uh, but unfortunately I do still uh, suffer from resting approachable face. <laughs> My face is just like this collection of very kind-looking circles. <laughs> when I had my glasses on, I looked like a cartoon owl that would give you directions in a library. <laughs> <laughs> and now without my glasses, I just am now, you know, still a collection of kind-looking circles, but I just can't see these days, so I'm just a sentient Roomba. <laughs> Uh, I think it's important to learn things, guys. I think it's important to always be learning. Uh, I recently started trying to learn Spanish. I think it's a good language to know. I think it is a useful language to know. I think that you can help more people when you know Spanish. Um, but learning Spanish is a dangerous game for the ethnically ambiguous amongst us. <laughs> I'm looking at this crowd and it might not be super relatable for all of you, but that's very good. Uh, but for example, I was recently in the gym the other day, right? I was getting ready in the locker room, and the cleaning lady comes in, so you know, I try to be polite, and I acknowledge, hola. Hola. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> she starts cleaning around me, I move my bag, being very mindful of her, and just, okay. <laughs> Dora is so fucking proud of me right now. <laughs> and then her eyes light up. And she does something that I was not expecting. She speaks back to me in Spanish. And I don't know why I wasn't expecting that. I think that makes a lot of sense. But still, as she's speaking to me in rapid fire, fully fluent Spanish, getting more excited by the words, so happy that she found someone she can speak her mother tongue with, I'm filled with this rising sense of dread because I realize I have to break to this kind, hard-working, wonderful woman, then I am not the same kind of brown as her. And you know, I feel like it would be a lot easier to do if she didn't look like she could possibly be my mother. <laughs> but you know, I, I do this to myself. I do this to myself. I put myself in these positions, you know? Like, I, I have this really bad habit of playing this game where I pretend to be the same kind of brown as someone else for like as long as humanly possible to get as much of a social benefit or discount as possible. And it works. Well, old game of Schroeder's racism. <laughs> but you know, I, I joke around about it a lot, but I never really mind when another brown person asks me what kind of brown I am. You know, it's, it's always very warm, right? Like, they look at you and they ask you because they're like, oh, I see something that looks like my home in you, and that's beautiful. And then when a white guy asks me, I just know he's going to take my answer and put it on Pornhub's search bar later. <laughs> it's a curse to know things. Uh, so, to burden you with the curse of the knowledge of Agassi, I am uh, half Asian and half Jewish, which I always thought made me a very special and unique combo. Um, and then I went to California for the first time. <laughs> And I realized I'm just what happens when any couple in San Francisco reproduces. <laughs> not only have I never had a unique experience, I also genetically am not a unique experience. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to leave you guys on this. Uh, so clearly comedy is not paying the bills. Um, but uh, I, I do other work. I work as a barista and as a stripper. Clap it up for professional naked people. <laughs> Like even Pixar looked at those storyboards and said, that's too sad, I'm just gonna make the white bear and cut it. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm gone. I'm going to write something after the show. I'm going to do it in the next four weeks. Hey, thanks, y'all. I'm seeing you in the movie. <laughs>
Drum roll, please. Can we have 